Hey guys, so today we're talking about triggerable animations to amplify the quality of your interactive stream. Let's check it out. If you've never used open broadcasting software studio version before, it's an open source program that can allow you to build scenes, create sources, and utilize a lot of assets in order to uh, pull together a broadcasting platform on a variety of different uh, streaming services. Now, if you think I'm setting this up just because I wanna get you another transition animation or how to make an overlay, there's a variety of YouTube videos on that content. You can basically just type it into YouTube and you'll find so much more than you really want to watch. But in this video, I wanna talk about triggerable animations in the sense that it creates an interactive experience and almost an event-based uh, approach to streaming. So what exactly classifies as a triggerable animation? According to my definition, I would say it's an animated interactive response to an event or comment from a viewer beyond just a chat command feature. So normally whenever you're interacting with your chat, you type an exclamation point and throw out, a, you know, say my Twitter handle or maybe my Instagram, and then it would pop up with, you know, some chat information, a link or something like that. But if you wanted to take it a step further and create a visual experience, with this technique, you can really create some cool content. You can activate more than just a looped uh, social graphic. Maybe somebody asks in chat. You can do more than just tell me what this YouTube channel's name is. You can tell me what the kind of content is there. You can show me a little excerpt, have a pop-up window that gives me a little video that I can watch for about three to 10 seconds uh, that gives me a little idea of what I'm gonna get into before I even click on the link in the chat. Say you're a gaming streamer and you wanna add a little bit of personality to your stream by maybe celebrating a victorious moment visually or even creating nice. a comedic moment out of a loss or a, a, a oh, failure. God. You know, these create bonding <laughs> moments with your audience and they create oh, events heck. that they can look back That's on and say, so wow, I remember whenever we made that. I remember whenever I was a part of that historical moment. And, and you can kind of symbolize those in your stream with milestone animations that you can trigger at you know the spontaneity kind of in situations that happen during a stream you can't really predict what's going to happen during your stream but you can be ready for it so having some animations kind of queued up for different segments of your stream different emotional situations you know you could have a, a humorous kind of meme style animation that pops up to give life to your channel. Ultimately, these are the things that viewers remember about your channel when they look back through their feed full of streamers and say, hmm, who did I enjoy? What did I like watching? What do I wanna watch now? There are so many little ways that you can allow the technology to carry some of that production quality so that you can really focus on what streaming is all about. Personality, character, connection, those conversations with the viewers that give life to what it is you're really trying to do here. You're trying to reach people and connect with them. You're trying to help people. You're trying to create a fun experience with a group of friends. These are the kinds of things that you wanna amplify in your stream. Now, for those of you with After Effects experience, you can create as complex of a design or as simple a design as your branding kind of calls for. Advisably, this would be three to five to seven seconds long. Just something that can pop up real quick, then disappear and get back into the content. You don't want it to be a really a distraction. You want it to be an amplifier. Remember, that's what we're trying to do here. Some examples of these would be like a logo pop-up. You could do a tastefully done typography piece. You can do an accented animation, kind of like a um, alert animation, but for other things that are specific to your stream. Once the animations are built uh, to my liking, I export in After Effects, uh, use the render queue to click lossless, change to RGB plus alpha, and leave everything else the same. It's, it's really that simple. It's not really a complicated process, it's just knowing that simple feature that you have to follow. Once you open up open broadcasting software, uh, click the plus sign to create a media source, give it a title, victory, okay. And then choose browse, Find your animation. You can add loop if you want it to loop. Usually I say uh, uncheck restart playback when source becomes active, just so that I make sure that it doesn't start off um, every time I switch scenes or anything like that. Everything else is fine. Click okay and it'll pop up. Add that little victory scene. 
So once that is added, I go into uh, OBS preferences. This is on a Mac, it's the same thing on a PC. Go to hotkeys and scroll all the way down. Uh, victory would be in V, so it would be near, near the bottom. I can look here, there it is. And then click on restart and I would select say two on the number pad so that um, I know that that key will uh, activate the animation. And then I say go, press two, and there you go. Your animation is now keyframeable. Something happens, we just won the battle. We can go in, press two, and our, our victory animation will pop up. Just another side note, the guy who I made this animation for, his name is AJ Valdez. Uh, you should check out his Twitch channel. I got a link down in the description down below. He's a fantastic streamer, and I did some work for him. It was pretty fun. Uh, you should check it out. Just a little side note. Be ready for a little bit of an experience as soon as you open up open broadcasting software for the first time. It's quite interesting how all of them kind of activate at the same time, but once you get through all of those, as usual, go through all of your OBS scenes before you go live and you should be good to go. Once again, guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful and given you a couple of tips to help you amplify your stream. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. If I miss anything, be sure to um, let me know as well. I would love to learn and grow as a YouTuber, and this is a new experience for me, so any, any uh, advice and guidance is helpful. Remember, never give up, never surrender, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.